Next, let's perform more accurate analysis for the number of false positives. We can actually think of passion items into buckets as flowing dots into targets. Let's say that if we throw M dots into N equally likely targets, then the first question that we want to ask will be, what's the probability that one target gets at least one dot? And in, and in our case, the targets, again, they are, the, they are like the, the bits of buckets in, in the algorithm, and the dots are the hash values of the items. Now, the question we ask is, what's the probability that a target gets at least one dot? And this is equivalent to the probability that one bucket is one. Now, let's see how we can compute this. Obviously, since we have n targets and we're throwing the dots randomly, then the probability that, that one target x is actually hit is just one over n, right? And then the probability that this target x is not hit by one dot is one minus one over n. And since we have m dots in total, then the probability that any of these m dots uh, does not hit this, uh, this target will be one minus one over m raised to the power of n. And the probability that at least one dot actually hits the target S will be one minus that. And we can actually rewrite this M as N times N divided by N. And after doing this, our calculus tells us that uh, this whole term here, uh, one minus one over N raised to the power of N is actually equal to one over E, where E is the base of the, uh, of the logarithm. And this is actually equal to one over E if n goes to infinity. Then since usually in our problem, we have a lot of, a lot of bits in the bit array, we can say that this whole term can be very, very well approximated by the number one minus E to the power of a minus M over M. So basically, the probability that each element in the bit array B is one is equal to the fraction of ones in the array B, right? And, and this is equal to the probability of false positive because let's say that you have 30% of ones in the array B, then, then there's a 30% chance that any, any of the items can be hashed to a fraction of one and becomes a false positive. And the probability of false positive, as we mentioned in the previous slide, would be one minus e to the power of minus m over n. Now let's look at an example more concretely. Let's say that we have 10 to the power of nine dots, and we have uh, eight, eight times 10 to the power of nine targets. So this is like um, uh, eight billion targets, right? And this is one billion dots. So the fraction of one in the bit array uh, would be one minus e to the power of, of minus one over eight, which is 0 0.1175. And compare with our earlier very rough estimate, uh, earlier in, uh, in the previous part, we estimate that the false positive rate would be one over eight, which is 0 0.125. So it's actually, uh, this is indeed a little bit smaller than our previous estimate. This is because this previous estimate actually assumes that no two key uh, were hashed to the same bucket. Of course, this is not true. And this is why this, this true false positive probability that we calculated is actually a little bit smaller than this estimate. And with this, we are ready to discuss the full uh, bloom filter algorithm. Let's consider that we have a total number of M items. So the cardinality of the set S is actually M. And let's say that we have in the bit array, we have N bits in total. Then the difference between this bloom filter algorithm uh, and our previous algorithm is 
is that instead of using one hash function in the Bloom filter algorithm, we, we use k-independent hash functions. And let's denote them as uh, h1, h2, all the way to hn. And in this algorithm, during the initiali initialization uh, phase, we will set the bit array b to uh, as an array of all zeros. And then for each element s, in the set pass, we will just use each of the hash function and we'll hash this element into some, some entry of this bit array and we'll set this entry into one. Note that uh, we have actually multiple hash function. So for each, I, for each element in a set, we will probably uh, have uh, multiple ones. And one thing to note here is that although we have multiple hash function, we have one single bit array. And after the initialization and during the runtime, if uh, a string element with a key X arrives, then we will first hash this key or we hash this item using our K independent hash function. Basically we will hash, hash it into uh, K different uh, buckets in the bit array and we'll, we'll see what's the value of these buckets. And we will only declare that X is actually in the set S uh, if all these K hash functions hash this item to, to bit one. So only if they are all one, we, we will declare that X is in the, in the set S. Otherwise we will discard this element X. Now let's do a bit of analysis for this Bloom filter algorithm. So the first question is what fraction of the bit vector B are ones? This is the same as the question before. And, and different from before when we have M dots, since now we have a K independent hash function and we have M items, therefore we're actually throwing K times M dots at N targets, right? Um, so the fraction of ones in the in a bit array is actually one minus e to the power of minus k times n over n. We can see that this number is is actually larger than before, right? Because k originally k is one, then now k is larger than one. And this whole thing becomes smaller, and this one one minus this uh, this term will be larger. But fortunately, since we have k independent hash function, and we only let the element x through if all k functions hash this element to a bucket of value one. Therefore, uh, the false positive probability is actually this whole term raised to the power of k. Now you might be wondering, is this number really, uh, really smaller than, than, when, than when k is equal to one? Let's look at a concrete example. Let's say that we have a total of m, uh, m items, so m equals to one billion, and we have a bit array of length eight billion. Now, the original solution before Bloom filter they use only one, uh, one hash function, and the false positive rate will be zero point one one seven five, right? But if you have two independent hash functions, then the false positive rate will decrease significantly. It will become 0 0.0493. You can see that it's actually a lot smaller. Then naturally you might be wondering again, what if we in keep increasing K? What would happen, right? You can see that if we keep increasing the number of hash functions K, the false positive probability will first go down and then it goes up, go up again, right? And actually with some simple calculation, we can, we can see that we, we actually have an optimal value of K. This optimal value of K is equal to N over M times uh, log two. And in our case here, uh, the optimal K is actually eight times uh, log N two, which is equal to 5.54. And roughly since K can only be an integer, then basically we will set this K to six. So the error, the error or the false positive probability in this case, uh, when k is equal to six would be uh, equal to 0 
by, we can see that this is actually a lot smaller than the original version when we have only one hash function. And then to briefly summarize, we have talked about this balloon filters and it has guaranteed that we, we will have no false negatives and we only need to use limited memory. And this is actually great for pre-processing uh, before any more expensive checks. And it's also suitable for hardware implementations because hash function computations can be naturally paralyzed. 